Hi friends, it's Becky and today I'm going to be making some things with the Stay Golden Jesse James Beads Magical Mystery Bead Box. I pulled out some of the beads and findings and a tassel from the box already that I'm going to be making something with. But like, ah, just look at these colors. They are so warm and inviting and just perfect. I love the olive greens. Um, this isn't my my comfort colors of red, but I do love like these muted oranges that go well, so well with the gold colors and the yellows um, and even some browns. And I actually pulled these out to start making like the day after I opened it. I was like, I'm so ready to start making with these. And then I realized that I had ordered some of the silver silk things from Silver Silk and more that were meant to be curated to go with it. Um, and I didn't have them yet. So I wanted to wait until I had them. But in the meantime, while I was doing that, I did dig around in my Silver Silk stash. And I have quite a few things already that definitely go with it. Like the things that I got from the uh, JJB collab shop was some of this hollow mesh, which you can stuff with beads or you can wrap it around some beads or something like that. Neelay has a lot of really great tutorials on how to use hollow mesh um, that I would recommend. I also got some of this bronzite pipe chain, which I already have in my stash, but you can always use more, right? So I was like, oh yeah, let's get some more of those. And then I got this olive um, three needle chain, which I'm gonna be using for this. And I'm gonna show you how in this video we can attach one of these clamshells to the three needle chain, kind of the same way you do with like Coriana chain. I'm gonna be stringing my beads on this instead of using um, beading wire. So it's gonna be a little bit different, a little bit, uh, a little bit more, but like these are some of the things that I had in my stash that I thought also goes really, really well with this. You've got this like ivory colored um, flat mesh that goes really, really well with the rest of this box. You've got some dark brown flat mesh. It's like uh, the basically the bronze eye color except without the the warm part, but it's it's nice and, and brown there. And then these two are actually in the JJB collab shop, but I didn't buy them because I already had them in my stash. One is this forest capture chain and capture chain if you're not familiar with silver silk. It's ball chain that has this knitted wire around it that gives it this color. So the forest one has this um, kind of gunmetal color of ball chain with this olive green wire around it. And then this golden one has a gold ball chain with gold color wire around it. Both of those are on the Silver Silk and More site. Um, and then this is a capture chain that um, think it might have been one of the pop-up shop capture chains or else it was with one of the inspired by Sundance kits or something like that but it is a bronze an antique bronze ball chain with this rich russety orange color of wire around it and so I was going to do part of my design using this olive green three needle chain and I was still sort of deciding between which of these I was going to use for the rest of it. And since I've got these pops of orange, I thought this would look great with it. Or I could go with a continuation of the olive green and have this. I'm, I think I'm leaning towards this, on if I'm going to be honest with you. Or that stay golden using the gold capture chain. So I'm just, I'm still making that decision. Like, I really love this, but like, one of the things about this is because it's it's a uh, it's not for sale anymore, so you guys can't buy it. Um, when you see stuff in the pop up shop at Silver Silk Omar, if you want to get them, usually they're sort of one offs. They're not going to be made again. These two are in the regular um, section of, of it, you can purchase it. It'll probably be remade unless he decides to discontinue it. But if you see something and it's within your budget, just grab it when you see it. Because even though I saw this and I didn't have plans for it when I got it, um, it goes so well with the rest of this. That, like if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready sort of situation scenario. This is why we stash things away. But yeah, so I've, I've got other 
some result that I can definitely use with this um, that I think is going to look great. Oh my gosh, maybe, I, maybe I'll do three. No, that's too much. Is it? No, that's too much. No? Yes, no. Okay, one. And I think it will be this guy. Yeah. Yeah, the olive green. And now my intention is that this is going to be a long necklace because I'm going for hippie chick vibes on a long necklace that would not be out of place next to like a paisley blouse and some bell bottoms maybe some long hair or something so that's absolutely what I'm going for um, so I am going to be using some silver silk caps for this chain but again it's going to be a long chain and it's not until we get to the end of that that we're going to use that um, but I am 100% going to be stringing on my beads onto the three needle chain. And this is a very long amount of three needle chain, but I don't need that much of it. So let me get my beads sort of lined up in a row and then I'll figure out how much I want to have on this and I'll cut off on the other end and then we'll start stringing. So what I'm gonna do is take some of these matte finish, like lemonade yellow beads, some of these olive lava rocks these two fantastic wood beads with the painted on flowers one of the resin roses and a gold tassel and several daisy spacers with a couple of these and we're going to just put these together so on the actual chain part or, or the strung part i'm gonna have these guys with the large daisy spacers on either side of them. And then one, two, three, like that. With the smaller daisy spacers between each of those. And then One, two, three, like that. And that's going to be each side. And I'd like to leave some of this showing. I don't want it to be like strung up right next to it because I want that olive color to be part of it before it gets connected to the other. So it's gonna be just fine with me if we go there. And then a little bit longer than that over there. So that's how much I'm going to cut off for that and I'll put the rest of this away to use on another project. So I'm going to use this three needle chain and I, I was just seeing if I could do it and I'll show you how I did it. It's basically just tying a knot, sort of the way you tie a knot in a piece of cord in order to get it to fit in the collot. Um, with like Coriana chain you've got to put a crimp on there. You don't need a crimp for this. You can just do a little knot with the uh, the three needle chain. It's just it's just wire that has been knitted together into basically a cord. All right. So let's make our focal before I start stringing. I'm going to use two of my matte finish lemonade colors, two of these daisy spacers, and two of these um, corrugated ball spacers, and some wire. Let's use some 22. Yeah, let's do 22. You can use 20, you can use 22. I'm just going to grab this because it was right next to my desk. And I'm going to cut off about six inches might not need six inches it's probably going to be fine with like five but i'm going to start with a wrapped loop on one end and it does not need to be a large loop so i'm just going to use my smallest 
loop on my bail making pliers. I made a little bend about um, an inch and a half, two inches from the end. And I'm just holding on to it. You don't have to death grip it when you hold on to it. Just hold on to it so that it doesn't move when you use your finger to pull the wire around it. I'm gonna let go of that, rotate it to get it out of the way, and then keep going all the way around to the other side. So it crosses in front, like when you cross a scarf around your neck. And now that I've got my loop, I'm gonna hold on to it and push this wire around the stem of this link about three times. I'm gonna cut off my excess. And if I've got any pokey outy bits, I'm just gonna smush them flat with my chain nose pliers. All right, now I'm gonna start stacking these beads and this bead. And I think I want to do these beads next to this one. So we're gonna start with this corrugated spacer. We're gonna put this guy on here, get the daisy spacer next to the flower, put our flower bead. It does have a hole all the way through it from top to bottom like that. And then just stack the rest of these on in the opposite order. So they mirror each other or like their bookends. And now I need to make a loop on the other end and attach my tassel. So for this, it's going to be hanging out this way. All right, I'm just figuring out which way I want my loop to face, if it's going to be parallel or perpendicular. And I think parallel is gonna work for me. So if I see this loop and it's straight instead of round, then that's the direction I want to be looking at. And I'm gonna hold on to my wire with my chain nose pliers and then bend over the top of it. And that gives me some room down here to wrap after I get my loop made. Once again, I'm gonna use the same loop on my six step looper bring it all the way around. But before I wrap this around the neck, I'm gonna slide my tassel on there so that it gets connected. And now that that's linked to it, I can close up that loop and I'll have my focal belt. And I'm just gonna wrap this all the way around. And it on the other side. There you go. And see, I've got a little pokey outy bit right there. Just gonna use my pliers and tuck that in. Stop turning. There we go. And now I've got this ready to be strung on between my beads. All right, so now to string on to the three needle chain, it is about one millimeter in diameter. So it's going to be able to fit through most holes on most of these beads. The only catch is that sometimes here on the end, you might have a couple of pieces of wire that are a little fray-y looking. So you wanna take your fingers and just kind of pinch the wire and pull it straight right here at the very end. And that's gonna help with getting it on there. So then we just start stringing and sliding this guy down there. I'm gonna string by holding it and then putting it through here rather than with uh, with some beading wire I might uh, push it down through there and that's just because this is knitted wire and not um, beading wire so it's not going to be as resilient to bending and then bending back 
as that all is. Most of these fortunately have nice big holes that this three needle chain can fit through. Like that. And again, I wanna leave a little bit of that exposed. So when I go to do my thing on the other side, it's gonna have some of that extra room. I was really, really pleased that we have so many spacers and so many um, of these things in this box so that we can do more with them. It just feels like there's a lot more that we can add to it when we have so many of these pieces. All right, so there's that end and I'm gonna pass it through the hole on my focal. Like that. And now let's do the other end. just doing this carefully because it seems like the hole inside of here isn't entirely smooth and so it's catching a little bit on these bumps on the, the chain so I'm just going to be very careful as I move this to where I want it to be there we go one more. I'm calling these lemonade beads because that's the color um, and the vibe that I get from them. One more lemonade bead. A big old daisy spacer. Another one of these. Yeah, we are definitely heading more towards the hippie chick end of the 70s and further away from the disco end of the 70s with this make. See how it's they're kind of separating a little bit. Just move them back together with your fingers. It'll help them get on, the bead get on a little bit easier. Go. All right. Just gonna scooch these a little bit, not too much, but a little bit over there. And now this is the part where I'm going to attach this to the collade. Now collade is also called a clamshell. This particular style has a little hole here in the bottom that you can put a cord or Coriana chain, or in this case, the three needle chain through it. And then you can do a crimp on the cord or tie a knot in, in, it, in the cord or something like that, and then close this around that. So you end up with a little bit here that you can attach to anything else that you want to attach it to. So I'm going to be doing that with this. I'm going to put the three needle chain through that little bitty hole 
right there and hopefully not struggle too much with it. Yep, there it goes all the way through. And I'm just going to scooch this down right next to the beads so that it's out of the way while I take a little gander at where I want my knot to be because that's how I'm going to make it so it stays on is I'm just going to tie a little knot right here in this three needle chain push it down to that place that I want it to be carefully slowly and then tighten it up it doesn't need to be super tight as long as it's gonna stay and it should stay just fine like that I'm gonna snip off my excess pull up my collot make sure my bits of wire are inside of it and then close it up you can close it up with some pliers or with your fingers um, try to make sure that those holes on the ends match up and then you have a piece of three needle chain that is ready to be attached to the rest of my silver silk chain and again i'm using the forest capture chain that is available on the silver silk site if you're interested in doing that and for this i am 100 going to want this to go over my head and just angle down the front of my chest i think it would be fun to maybe use this as a layering piece with some shorter necklaces that i'm going to be making from this box so i believe that this length which is let's see where's my cut this off right here this goes into the stash to be used for other things but this is a pretty decent amount of wire it's gonna be a long long necklace for me long for me <laughs> anyway and um, let's just see how long that actually is Ooh about 24 inches so that's going to be added to the seven and a half inches that this is so it will be a fairly long necklace for me not not a bad thing all right let me grab my capture chain ends and these are made by silver silk specifically for these they have a little lip on the inside that will catch on the little balls of the capture chain and hold on to them so you can put them in here like this I usually try to go at least two balls in And where's my pliers? I'm gonna take some of these flat pliers because honestly, they just hold these better when I'm clamping them down. Like that. Once it's clamped down, I like to do a little tug test because sometimes I'll put it in there and it won't grab the lip right or like the ball will be in the way so that that little lip on the edge won't have grabbed it and then i'll want to try it again all right now let's get the other one connected let's make sure we are facing the same sides See, that's not that's part way in so it's not in there very well All right. now it is okay now let's get some jump rings to attach these ends to these ends and this way, if it's a long, long necklace, I don't have to worry about a clasp. So 
I'm going to hold on to one side of my jump ring and slide the other side, just move it over, rotate it with my pliers to open it. And I can get both of these attached to the jump ring. And then I can twist it closed so that both of those ends meet and do the same thing to the other side. So probably the most complicated part of this was the wire wrapping my focal. And the second part that might have been a little bit new was getting these collots closed onto the three needle chain. you'd like to see some of the other things that were in this box, I will put a link to my unboxing in the description below. I'll also put a link to the Silver Silk and More site if you wanted to grab some of the Silver Silk that has been specifically curated to go with this bead box. It's been pretty wonderful most of this year um, that we've had uh, so many different like custom chains and things that have been picked out and selected by Neelay to go with the Jesse James beads magical mystery bead boxes because I mean I love the Jesse James beads magical mystery bead it's such a mouthful isn't it I love that but I also really love silver silk and uh, I have a lot of fun finding new and interesting things to do with the silver silk chains so I am really excited that I was able to get some of these and that they go so, so well together. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you're going to try this out with the three nail chain or if you've already tried it out. Um, and if you have any additional tips for working on that, I love helpful tips in my comments. And I will talk with you later. Happy beating!